Hello and welcome to Tank and Anthony News. My name is Tom and tonight I thought I would talk about um, books that surprised me. So these are some books on armored vehicles that I came across at some point where either I had really low expectations or really didn't know what to expect and a book surprised me. Um, so this list is not necessarily, these aren't the best books out there. It's, it, as you'll see, it's a really eclectic uh, mix, but they're, they're all books that um, I ended up finding either to be more useful or at least more entertaining um, than I would have thought just based on um, uh, the cover, the description or, or whatever. So uh, I'm gonna go through these in order of size because that's how I'm stacked in front of me. Um, this first one, uh, so a little background. So I was interested in the topic of, of armored vehicles and whatnot when I was a kid back in the, the 80s. Uh, by the time I was in college, I kind of set that aside. I didn't know anybody who shared my interest in it in my own social circle. And, um, you know, it's before the internet, so there's really no way to sort of uh, talk to other people. There's no forums or anything. So I just sort of forgot about it up until about 10 years ago. I sort of started to get back into it, started my, my book collection. Uh, prior to that, though, like in the early 2000s, I was working at a used bookstore. And uh, I was going through a box of what we call leave behinds, which is, you know, somebody comes in with a box of books and says, hey, do you want to buy these? And we'd be like, no. And they're like, well, can I just leave them here? And we're like, okay. Um, which just happens a lot in used book business. And I was going through the box looking for what was salvageable. And one of the things I found was this little book called Tanks Are Mighty Fine Things. And I just thought that's such a fantastic title. Um, and what this is, this is published right after World War II by Chrysler Corporation. And it's just... Sort of a small book that's on the history of the Sherman tank um, and specifically the Chrysler tank arsenal. Um, it's got color illustrations, as you can see, and photos. And it's just sort of a cool little piece of, I mean, it's essentially corporate propaganda. I mean, I wouldn't recommend this as, as a source somebody used. Like, you know, everything in here you sort of have to approach with a, with a little skeptically, because of course the Chrysler Corporation is going to try to make themselves look good. Um, that said, there's there's some interesting little his, history and stuff in here, particularly more about the corporate side of things. Um, but mostly, I just thought it was an entertaining little read. It's it's just uh, it's almost Chrysler's response to some of the criticisms that came at the Sherman tank in the press during the war. So it's it's not just trying to make Chrysler look good. It's trying to make the Sherman tank look good. You know, particularly after particularly like around the period of the Battle of the Bulge and afterward when, when there was some question in the U.S. media at the time whether the Sherman tank was, was good enough to do the job. So it's an interesting little piece of corporate propaganda about tanks. Um, and it also just has some, some wonderful illustrations and, and pictures. And um, and it's it's available. You can, you can read it online in PDF format. It's out there. And, you know, I think copies of this i've looked them up you can get them online relatively cheap it's sort of amazing for a 70 some year old book they must have printed a ton of these because um they are out there on the used book market and they're cheap i suspect they probably hand them out to every single employee at the plant and that's why there's so many so that's book number one on my list of books that um surprised me because this one at the time i didn't even know that existed and you know it tanks are mighty fine things it's such a fantastic title uh, book number two on my list is one I picked up maybe four years ago or so. I was at um, the discount bookstore in town. It's since gone under. Um, and it's uh, Germany's Panzer Arm in World War II by uh, uh, R.L. DiNardo. Um, I did do an interview. It's on my website uh, a few years ago with him after I read this book. I, I was sort of that impressed. And he, I, at least at the time, I think he was teaching down at, in, in Texas at like the Marine University or I, I'll have to double check. And... Um, Probably got it totally wrong. Anyhow, this is, as you can tell, a Stackpole uh, soft cover. So probably people have seen these. Stackpole books did a ton of these, all in the same format. They all got the sort of the green and the black with the yellow. And um, these are all pretty much sort of Stackpole would do these books. These are all books that were published usually like by University Press or somebody else first in hardcover and then st Stackpole would do the soft cover. And they can really vary. There's some I've bought that, I didn't find very useful at all. Others that are fantastic. This one, um, you know, you can still see the price tag from the discount bookstore. I picked it up going, oh, you know, it's kind of thin. And, you know, Germany's pans, you know, what more is there to say? And I took it home and I read it almost all in one sitting. Um, and it is um, uh, basically an expanded version of his uh, doctoral thesis. 
but it is the most concise and useful sort of single volume history of the German Panzer Forces of World War II, covering sort of um, development, training, um, doctrine, uh, all these different things that, so it's not covering the tanks themselves so much. This isn't like if you're looking for just another book that's just a history of like, you know, and then they came out with the Panzer II and then the Panzer III. No, this is all just like about the development of the, the Panzer arm itself. I mean, if I was teaching a course on the German Panzer forces of World War II, this would be like the number one book that I would assign. So just a fantastic, handy, little concise book um, that I just don't think has ever gotten as much attention as it deserves. It's... It's one I enjoyed very much, and also, you know, I enjoyed my conversation, which I had on the, because uh, that particular interview I did with Dr. Bernardo was a phone interview, sort of, for about 90 minutes. A um, in, uh, very interesting guy. The next book on my list is one that I picked up on Amazon. Um, there was a period where I'd just sort of go through Amazon and, and literally just put in, like, Tank in the book field and just see what came up. Um, and anything that was basically, like, a dollar or less that looked remotely interesting, I'd order because it's a dollar plus shipping, you know. So, you know, shipping usually is three ninety nine, so five bucks. You know, if it's if the book costs less than a, a Burger King combo meal, I mean, you can't really go wrong. And even if it's not a very good book, it'll probably still be more enjoyable than a Burger King combo meal. Um, this particular one though is uh, Tank and AFE Buyer's Guide by Michael Green. Um, this book is out of date. It's uh, what was it written? Yeah, 93. So this, it's, it's 20 years old. Part of the reason it was so cheap, um, I'm sure. So there's, you know, that said though, so I was sort of skeptical because I was like, well, we'll see if it's got anything interesting. And because Michael Green's, he's written a lot of good stuff over the years. Um, I find, uh, you know, I've got quite a few of his books and this is the only one I know though, that's been run, been written on this particular topic. And even though it's outdated, there's still a lot of really good information in here, you know, because when you're talking about World War II vehicles, it's not like um, that markets, you know, in terms of the vehicles that are out there has changed an awful lot. I mean, other than, you know, a few restorations that have happened or when they pull a tank out of a swamp in, in Eastern Europe, you know, it, 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 it's not like there's a whole bunch of new World War II tanks that suddenly are appearing that people didn't know about in 93. Um, and it's also one of those topics that, you know, if you are interested in it like you know where do you go to find out about this stuff i mean you know i sort of started to learn a little bit about the whole sort of uh tank and afv collector's market just from what i could glean on forums and other places but there's nothing you can sit down and sort of get like an overview of it all so uh this book i i when i got it i remember i sat down i think i read through the whole thing in one night it was it was like I said, it's, it's, it's dated, but there's a lot of interesting information. And it's just a topic that hasn't been covered as far as... So, I, you know, I really wish somebody would come out with an updated version. You know, it's sort of funny. In this one, every single price that's listed in this book, like, add a zero. You know, I, I, I'd have to go back, but I remember reading in this. They're sort of referring to collectible World War II tanks as being, like, in the tens of thousands of dollars. Well, you know, nowadays they're hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, uh, like I said, Michael Green or whoever else wants to do an updated version, I'd buy it. Um, and even this old version, as it is, if you can get it copy really cheap, it's still an interesting book. Now, the next one is an example of a book that's it's not necessarily a fantastic book in and of itself, but it was it turned out to be better than I thought because I was at, and I'm not proud of this, I was at Barnes & Noble one day at the mall. Um, and, you know, they always have that section of, like, the discount coffee table books and there's always like a tank encyclopedia of some sort that's marked down 10.99 and they're not even worth that um they're just half the time they've got inaccuracies uh, inaccurate information inside of them and you know it's a sort of generic information you could probably find more on wikipedia but one that caught my eye mainly because it had the big red dot on it which meant it was half off of the already sale price of 12.98 so it's a six dollar book and i look i'm like oh, german pans is world war ii I don't need an encyclopedia of German Panzers of World War II. I've already got several, and like I said, those books are really less useful on the internet. But what's useful about this book, and why I have found it useful, and I do reference use it as a reference occasionally, is that the title is misleading. This is actually a history of German Panzer divisions. So if you look into it, it's basically page by page. It just covers um, every single Panzer division. So here's 10th Panzer Division, and it goes through 
you know, giving like five, six pages to each one, kind of giving a brief overview of vehicles that they used um, and different campaigns they're involved with. Nothing in depth, but when you need just a quick reference, because you sort of been like, oh wait, you know, what did the 7th Panzer Division do? It's a pretty handy reference, and um, it's attractive, and, you know, for six bucks, like, would I, would I recommend people go pay the full price for this thing? I, I think this is a reprint. I, I think this was originally published in two different volumes. I'm not sure. Um, but it, it's, it's one of those times, one of the few times I found something at Barnes & Noble in that sort of sales section that actually ended up being useful at all. Um, now, the last book on here is sort of one of the most random, and it is also the one that, that's probably been one of the most useful things I've owned. And I don't know how many times this thing's... I've been able to um, sort of win an argument or a discussion on an internet forum because of this book, and it is Jane's AFV Retrofit Systems, 1992 to 93, fifth edition by Tony Cullen and Christopher R. Foss. Uh, this particular one is oh, this one. You know, this one I got the binding. Uh, I have a couple other Jane's books, and they're usually falling apart because I can only afford the ones in really rotten condition. Um, so yes, this one's quite old, 92 to 93. As far as I can tell, looking online, I think they only published this particular one in this format from about in the early 90s. So I see like ones ranging from like 89 to 95 maybe. Um, and I'm sure there's slight differences between each year, each volume, but not enough for me to really, you know, need more than just this copy. And what's fantastic about this, um, because I know most a lot of people are familiar with Jane's, they're probably familiar with Jane's, uh, the, they have a book that's just on AFVs, which I have a copy of that as well, and it's, it's useful, but what's nice with this one, this one just gets really into so much nitty gritty on stuff, because it's about individual systems, so it's divided by, you know, weapons, engines, transmissions, so, you know, if you're looking for, you know, some real specific thing, like, I mean, here's engine stuff, you know, what, what is the torque on a, you know, the, the, the engine in a, in a Leopard 2? Some of that stuff is a lot of the books that are published on the vehicles. They don't really get into that kind of nitty gritty, but this book does. Uh, this has got just so much sp specific information, you know. And you know the thing with James is these are also old enough that you can afford them because these, when they come out, when they came out, were priced. I mean, I don't know the original prices, but they're they're stuff that really only institutions can afford. It's not for individuals, so. Um, these ones that you can pick up on the aftermarket, yes, it's 20-some-year-old information, but you know what? Some of this stuff, you know, you think about it. Stuff like the Leopard 2, the Abrams, sort of the third generation of tanks that are still in use now. A lot of those systems that are in there, they were around in the 90s. So, like, especially when we're talking about engines, transmissions, a lot of the stuff still current. Um, or, you know, if you want to know, you know, stuff from the 90s because you're interested in that particular period. But... This book, you know, I ordered it simply because I found a copy cheap, and I'm like, eh, what the heck. And it's turned out to be fantastically useful um, for all sorts of, of information. So that is my really eclectic collection of books I pulled off my shelf, things that I bought with no expectations or no idea what I was getting, simply because they were cheap, and it turned out to be something that was interesting and useful as well. I'm not recommending anybody else go out and buy these specific books, um, but... Uh, this is just, you know, hopefully people find it entertaining. So uh, I want to thank you for watching tonight, and um, hopefully we will see you again. Thank you much.